in which case you might just recommend medical therapy. Go away, have some rehab, take some aspirin, take a statin, have some other pills to try and improve your health. Off you go. How how effective is that, do you think? Like if they're at that early stage, you know, when they're on the statins and... Oh, very. And do you work closely with like a nutritionist or a dietitian and stuff like that? Because I find a lot of people obviously would be overweight or like, you know... You'd like to think we do, wouldn't you? I would love to think... think, I think in an ideal world where... Do you just send them on their way at times? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Do you not think there's no way that you could work with a dietitian or a nutritionist or... I don't know. (laughs) Because it's money, is it? Yeah. It's absolutely fucking crazy though that someone's had a heart attack or near a heart attack or something like that. And you, you obviously you're giving them the drugs and the advice. Yeah. But then if they was, you know, I know someone personally who had a heart attack and then when he come out, I was like, oh, you know, what, what's the thing? And he got like a leaflet and then like, you know, he didn't have that sort of, um, you know, knowledge of what to eat. He said, oh, I'm just going to eat more salmon. <laughs> and I was like, all oh, right, how much yeah. salmon? He's like, well, I don't know. Quite a lot. Yeah, loads. Yeah. A lot of salmon. Yeah. Is it well, just... Yeah. To be fair, that's good advice. I mean, it's not, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's not bad advice, yeah. but for him, like he was a bit overweight and things like that. So like, you know, he, he's not he's not aware of the amount of calories he should have a day to be healthy. He's not aware of his, you know, his macros is, is different. But I think that, but I think this is where cardiac rehabilitation programs play a part. So there's obviously some local provision. Nothing are just starting a program, and quite often they're run with multidisciplinary teams that would involve an exercise professional, uh, a dietitian. Is that is that with Nuffield? But do, do people on the NHS get that? They they they, are, they do, but it's patchy. But right. it really depends on which centre you went to and what yeah. their program is. Oh, so where in the so in in the country you're, yeah, you're based, yeah. basically. So Nuffield's program is is a is a free for all program, um, but it requires a clinical referral. But in addition to that, you'll have other local providers who will be doing community rehabilitation programs. Right. So there it is available, but the, the the varying levels of the quality that people get across the country is is, is huge. Um, you know, you've got everything from. I find that crazy. Like not like when we spoke when we spoke to um, uh, the other doctor about it, yeah. and actually it was Louisa, and we were say she was saying that in certain regions they don't have certain you know aspects of medical care and they don't have this and that. That that just seems mental to me, and I, I imagine people don't know that. No. You know, the general average person probably thinks everyone gets the same treatment and everyone gets the same thing. Yeah, I think I think less than fifty percent of of patients, I think, who have had a cardiac event go through cardiac rehabilitation. Is that right? I think Somewhere that's a there? fair summary. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there is evidence for people in rehab who have not only had a heart attack or bypass surgery, but there's evidence to say that anyone who had angina and had a stent would benefit from cardiac rehabilitation. But the, the, the provision of that in the UK is very patchy, mm. which is tragic, really, because we spend as doctors and, you know, the, the NHS is driven by doctors. And the, the thing that we're good at is procedures and drugs. You know, that's our thing. You go to medical school to learn procedures and to learn drugs or to learn how to, you know, cut people if you're a surgeon. But what you don't go there for is the rehab And there's, you know, rehabilitation medicine in this country is very underfunded um, and, yeah, massively underdeployed, which is a shame because there's great evidence. You you know, if you're looking for bang for your buck for this, giving someone loads and loads of drugs for the rest of their life or a well-set-up rehab program that ran for four or five months to motivate someone to do all these changes for themselves in the long term, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the evidence behind the rehab programs is huge. But they're just they're just not very sexy programs to deliver. But you say what you're doing though is is brilliant because if you did if they did do that for five months, say, and everyone got access to something like that, they would then save on like you said the the drugs and all the different stuff. But then it probably save your time as well because they're not coming back to you over and over again, or it would be a, a longer time until they're coming back to you. You must see it all the time. You must see someone, send them on their way, see them again three months later because they haven't changed their ways. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, of course. But the NHS is a, you know, my view of it is it's a relatively short term gain. You know, you're you're battling the next few weeks. You're battling the next six months. Whereas what you really need is someone to take the long term view in all of these conditions. It's not just cardiology and rehab. It's every single condition. Comes down to education as well, though, doesn't it? Yeah, hugely, yeah. 